744 Clifty Drive, back in the seat again after a few weeks off. Jordan Bear sitting in, taking things uh, under control while I was gone, and now back. And we're going to talk Shaw Girls Tennis this morning. Chris and Natalie Hill in. i got a couple seniors in. We'll talk uh, with them in just a minute. Coaches, good morning to you. Good morning. Good morning. Thanks for being here this morning. It is a beautiful tennis morning, isn't it? It sure is. <laughs> it is. We have practice right after this. Oh, well, that's that's good. Getting get to it before the heat. You guys, first year head coaches, who wants to kind of talk about the process of your, your tennis career and what led you to be a head coach? <laughs> All right, Natalie, you're up. Well, I like to say we are co-coaching this year because we could not do it individually, that is for sure. Um, it's been interesting working together. We've gotten along most of the time. <laughs> Sometimes we have different opinions on strategies with players, but overall, we have the same goal. You have to, you have to reel him in sometimes? You have to reel him in because he gets out of yeah, control? Yeah, well, he has different <laughs> advice than what I have sometimes. So. <laughs> well, Tim, but I might be a little more direct at times. You know, <laughs> Natalie's a very nice person. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I understand. <laughs> I understand. But we've really enjoyed it. We enjoy the girls. We really enjoy the sport. Um, I think Shaw has a very strong program and has for years, so we want to keep that going. You, what, what got you, Natalie, involved with, with being uh, with tennis? What, what was your uh, draw to tennis years ago? Well, I've always enjoyed the sport. I played at Shaw myself and played um, Division three tennis in college. Um, had great experiences throughout and you know having two daughters that were um, not forced to play tennis but they actually did want to play tennis um, we wanted to be an active part of that and also you know we love our school and want to help our school program so it's just kind of a continuation for me is it tough going from a player to a coach yes it is <laughs> what's the challenges um, it's well for one when you have a daughter on the team you really you can't watch your own child play a whole match because you're trying to watch five matches um, and I think a lot of times you're harder on your own child it's easier to bark at them than the others um, but it's also challenging because you have a lot of players you're working with a lot of different styles um, different personalities so trying to work the best way with each of the players all right, Chris. For you, what's uh, your involvement with? Uh, I mean, I know you you you're a tennis family, but uh, talk, talk a little bit about you as a, as a tennis player. Well, Tim, I started playing back in the early '80s. Mm -hmm. um, uh, my mom actually encouraged me to play, um, and uh, I kind of took it from there. And I, I played with Doc Stucker, who mm -hmm. the courts are now named after uh, quite a bit, and. Um, played in high school obviously in college and then I um, started helping the girls about four or five years ago started helping Mr. Sims mm -hmm. and uh, when Megan I believe our Megan was a freshman so um, those were very enjoyable years and Megan played with both of the uh, seniors that are here today obviously mm -hmm. and uh, it's been a real pleasure it's been a real pleasure working with these girls and mm -hmm. and um, kind of seeing the program uh, progress you know is it is it tough as a as a player going then to a coach and Adley well, kind of talked about that a little bit yes uh, sometimes because uh, your competitive um, spirit comes out uh, tremendously mm -hmm. you know and you you want them to uh, be as competitive as you are you you know you have a little more oversight because you've played mm -hmm. for so many years and you, you want to be um, successful but you know they they uh, I think they've gravitated to that mm -hmm. you know just generally the general spirit of competition and and um, you know very proud of them for for doing that with the success that the program has had over the last few years how do you how do you continue that from year after year after year after year because most of the kids will play a, a multitude of sports during the season so they can't fully dedicate to the tennis game yeah that's right Tim we face several teams during the year that they that's all they do year round you know they play in the winter uh, consistently which makes a difference but uh, many kudos here to Lisa and Steve Hesse for starting that junior high uh, program that feeder program and they've just they've done a tremendous job with that and it makes the world a difference when girls have two or three years of experience they come into that freshman year pretty familiar with how to play I mean just little things um, how to keep score how to navigate through mm -hmm. the games and sets and how to learn to win and it's very important but uh, 
um, yeah, many kudos to them for doing that. It's because that's a bit that those tennis courts are a busy place in mm -hmm. the, in the springtime, even on cold, windy days. <laughs> <laughs> you guys, when you when you get done with the season and and you get prepared for the next season, even at, at, at the junior high level, uh, you got to play. You got to play as much as you can. But again, you know, girls time is is always divided up between a lot of different activities and sports. Do you lift weights? Do you just do you just play tennis? What's kind of the regiment in the off season? Well, I I um these girls play multiple sports and I think it's it and so they will lift weights. Sure. They will they will be in shape when they come in, especially, you know, uh those that play basketball mm -hmm. um uh are they're, they're athletes, you mm -hmm. know. Um um and Katrina is has different um, activities, and I mean, she she in good shape coming in this year mm -hmm. the, the, with the uh, the band and et cetera. Mm -hmm. And but that's what, even though they're not playing tennis per se, right. they are in in good shape and they have that competitive edge because they are in these different sports. Yeah. Go ahead. And we did do conditioning before mm -hmm. the season started, mm -hmm. and I will say not every single player showed up to every single conditioning but we did have our, most of our dedicated players mm -hmm. come to most of the conditioning. What's your what's your con conditioning consist of? What do you do? Well a lot of times we were in the Hall's gym mm -hmm. obviously and mm -hmm. we did jump roping, agility ladders, some sprints. Um, we actually hit against the wall in Hall's, mm -hmm. did some serves. I mean just try to keep them active and starting to get into the sport. I, is, it a, is it a sport, the repetitive nature of the sport, as long as they're doing the technique correctly, just they need to hone the skills, but they can do that inside a gymnasium? Yes, they can work on footwork and mm -hmm. things. It is hard to work on your ground strokes and mm -hmm. obviously things like that. But, I mean, tennis is a really active sport, so footwork and speed, quick bursts of speed, I mean, that's something you can work on year-round. You, you, you're, you've already had a daughter go through the program. You have one going through now. It's tough coaching your own kid, but how do you deal with it? I'd say patience, Tim. <laughs> you know, and our daughter has been, um, uh, she's really overall has a tremendous attitude, and both of them did. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, it really hasn't been, it's been more enjoyable, mm -hmm. I mean, truly than anything because you get to spend time with them. So that's the way I definitely look at it right. and have really um, enjoyed it. I'd much rather be out there hitting balls and mm -hmm. practicing than mm -hmm. sitting on the sidelines, so yeah. to speak. So. Yeah. Natalie, I know it's, 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 you mentioned it's kind of hard to watch you know, kids play when, when everybody else is playing, but you kind of peek over to the court to see what they're doing. Yeah, actually, you know, I have no trouble watching four of the matches, mm. but usually the match my daughter's in, I kind of watch from a hiding point. <laughs> Because <laughs> she swears she doesn't play as well when I'm watching directly, so I just kind of stay away from that match. But um, I definitely focus on the other matches. And with two of us, we can kind of divide, mm -hmm. and we tend to try to rotate on opposite ends and always try to keep equal kind of surveillance, so mm -hmm. to speak, of the matches. Talk a little bit about uh, this season, how it's gone from start to where you're at right now. Well, our season overall has been good. Um, we've played a total of 15 matches. Um, we had four canceled either for weather or whatever reason, and one of those got rescheduled. Um, so, you know, record-wise, we're 12 and 3. We have, we have a pretty good record. Um, I feel like we could be maybe a little bit better than that, but, you know, towards the end of our season, we play a little bit tougher teams mm -hmm. than in the beginning of the season. We've had some really good wins, though, during this season. We won our conference tournament. Mm -hmm. uh, Megan Hesse had an outstanding match against Emma Foley. To kind of, we still had one more match going on, but with her winning her match, then it made it so much easier for mm -hmm. that final match. Um, so, really, overall, we've had a really good season. When you when you have teams. I guess if you if you had to set up a schedule, is it set up the way you would like for it, the tougher teams towards the end of the season? You'd like to have them at the beginning of the season or just sprinkled throughout? I don't know. It is kind of nice to play tougher competition as you're heading into sectionals, mm -hmm. but it's never fun to lose. Right. <laughs> so when you've had, you know, 
three losses here, your three losses here at the end of the season mm -hmm. haven't been enjoyable. And I feel like one of ours, um, Katrina, was actually injured, so we had to adjust the lineup in the Charleston match. And I feel like we definitely had a chance if we had Katrina in the lineup to win that match. And the other two, you know, could have gone either way as well. So they were close matches, two to three. How do you how do you spin then off a loss to your kids and building for you know the next match? What do you what do you tell them? Well, there's always things to still work on. I think the big thing that I've seen here towards the end is just footwork, good positioning, turning your shoulders, because our kids have good shots, but they need to be in good position. Mm -hmm. um, and they've got a lot going on, especially seniors with scholarships mm -hmm. and academics and everything. So it's challenging, but trying to have them get as much rest as possible and just be ready to be active and out there to play. You do look for the little things, mm -hmm. Tim, like um, uh, doubles teams that, that work well together, mm -hmm. that, that have a good chemistry. Right. What, what can you do a little better to make that chemistry better? Uh, and it's truly just a few points here or there, mm -hmm. you know, positioning on the court, you know, uh, just just not footwork and, and consistency and things like that, but attitude. Um, with the singles players, it's truly uh, learning how to win at the end when in crunch time. Mm -hmm. What can you do to, to finish out the match? Because sometimes that's very difficult. I mean, it's a, it's a team sport, but yet you're playing individually. So um, <clears throat> you have to learn how to, how to finish it out, you know, and that's something that these two girls have consistently done over their tenure at Shaw. You know, mm -hmm. Megan and Katrina, they're very reliable, you know, so. Um, but that, those are some of the things you look at, and I think it's been good that we've played tougher competition towards the end of this year mm -hmm. because of the, the, the weather situation right. was so poor mm -hmm. in the beginning that you just want them to, to play a little bit, right. have a little bit of, of uh, court time mm -hmm. uh, before you know, we play somebody uh, fairly difficult. So you, uh, you, you get towards the end of the season then, and you're, you're, you, know, you get a couple of losses, but you're against you know, good competition. You know, you, you, you essentially want to continue that that mold of good play going to sectional. Um, but if, if you see a kid that may be a little down because of a loss, what kind of advice do you give them? Confidence. Mm -hmm. Remain consistent and confidence and, and, and practice, practice, practice. Yeah. Um, um, and try not to focus on the negatives. Although there's absolutely room for criticism. Sure. Try to be try to be positive, and that's something that I, I because uh, I was an extreme critic of myself. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, not only tennis but a lot of things. Yeah. So, but I have to remember that hey, you know, and especially with yeah. and not saying things to my own kids at home. You know, so yeah. Uh, but uh, tr that trying trying to trying to focus on the positive aspect of it and what they did well. So, is it okay to to be a critic of yourself? Oh, I think so. I think that's what breeds success. You know, you, if you're not, if you if you become complacent and satisfied with things, you'll no. you'll stop. Yeah. So I, I absolutely believe that. Natalie, what do you think? Oh yes, but I think you need to use that in a positive way. Mm. You, you know, if you know your backhand needs some work, then focus on hitting more backhands. If you know you're slow on the court, just you know go out and run and do some things on even on your own. Mm. You know, so I think. It's good to be a critic, but you need to keep it in a positive manner. You want to mention uh, who makes up your, your roster of your team? Yes, we have three seniors. So we have Megan Hesse and Katrina Gobert, who are here today with us. And we also have Sam Shaw. We have four juniors. Those are Kate Grody, Caden Hambrick, Kelly Hesse, and Devin Russell. We have three sophomores, Caroline Grody, Reina Ortez, and Briseta Reyes and two freshmen, Phoebe Grody and Abigail Hill. And we do have a team manager, Emma Belt, who just came up to me at the beginning of the season and said, do you want a manager? And I said, <laughs> yes, that would be great. Never turned so, that down, <laughs> no. Kudos to her. We appreciate her a lot. All right. And, of course, you mentioned you have uh, a very healthy junior high program, too. Oh, yes. We have uh, Lisa Hesse coaching the junior high program. Um, I believe Liz Subrin has been helping her some, a teacher at Shaw. Um, but, like 
my husband said that program was started by Steve and Lisa Hesse mm -hmm. when our daughter was in the sixth grade, I believe. Yeah. So they started that program, they've continued that program, and it's been an excellent feeder program. Yeah, it's been a testament to the success at the varsity level. Indeed. Yes. We're going to come back to Coach's Corner and talk more in just a minute here on Works 96.7. Welcome back to Coach's Quarter Live from McDonald's on Madison Tilltop. I'm Tim Torrance talking to Shell Girls Tennis this morning with uh, Chris and Natalie Hill. Going to talk to the seniors here in just a second. And coaches, I want you guys, and you've already mentioned it, but I want you to talk about your seniors a little bit before I talk to them. The importance of seniors. Well, it's critical to have seniors. And we have two here with us today that are outstanding seniors. <laughs> I could even get choked up talking about it, but um, they're definitely leaders of our team co-captains they've played tennis since they were in junior high uh, Megan Hesse plays three sports a year Katrina Gobert plays um, tennis and band to me is like a sport because she's whipping that gun around and wherever that's called I think it really has helped her upper body strength mm -hmm. so so they're both very active they're both very good students top in their class um, excellent leaders so it's going to be a really big loss when they graduate. Senior leadership, and I don't care what coach, what sport, and what team, it's always important. Yeah, Tim, the, the three things that come to mind when I think of these two girls are, are consistency, um, leadership, and integrity. Um, and it's, it's always, when you uh, go to Greensburg, for instance, over the years to play sectionals, and you step on the court and you're a little nervous, you know, you, you, sure. you want to win and, and uh, hope everything comes together that day. Um, I think all coaches feel that way, no matter what the sport, but you look, look down the lineup and you see these girls and, and through the years, uh, you can count on them. Right. And, and that means a tremendous amount. And they're always there. Uh, they're, they've, they've been there uh, throughout the years at, at everything. And uh, they, they play hard consistently and they pulled us out of these matches. Um, and it just means a tremendous amount. The, the girls look up to them. They're great examples, and they're going to move on and mm -hmm. do great things. But we've appreciated and enjoyed being around them uh, very much. So they've All got right. great families. and mm -hmm. so. It's good to have good seniors. Yeah, yeah, it, it, it really is. is. All right, is. pass the mic down to Megan. Okay. Good morning. Good morning. How is, uh, how's things going? Going pretty good. Um, <laughs> tennis season. Let's just talk about your four years playing tennis. Kind of a little bit of an experience. Talk talk about it a little bit. Um, well, I've been playing tennis for a while. So when I started like freshman year, I had like a decent amount of experience. Mm -hmm. And so I think I've like I've been playing doubles the past like couple of years. And so me playing singles this year kind of been like a new experience for me. It's like a different mentality and like a different game basically. So that's been a little adjustment I had to make. It Why this singles? Year. Why singles this year? Um, just the way that like our players and like where our strengths were, I think it was like the strongest lineup for our team would have been me mm -hmm. playing singles. So good adjustment for you. Um, yeah, so a, I'd say a tough adjustment for yeah, you. Yeah, it was pretty tough. It's a lot different to play singles, but I've been I've gotten used to it, so it's not too bad now. <laughs> just just no partner. Yeah, it gets a little lonely. <laughs> it gets a little lonely. How's your How's your senior year been then? I, I, with the adjustment to singles, but how's it been overall? Um, it's been pretty good. I've been happy with how our like season has gone. We lost I think like five of our top seven last year, mm -hmm. or four of our top seven last year. So I didn't really know like what to expect this season, and I was really happy with how we've been doing so far. What are you looking forward to then with sectionals? Um, I think we have a really good shot at sectionals. Like I know there's some pretty tough teams in there, but I think if we all just like go out and play our best, we'll be able to be pretty, pretty solid. Um, plans after high school? Um, I'm going to Western Kentucky University, and I'm going to major in chemistry and education. Oh wow! Well, best of luck. Thank you. All right, you guys switch places. We'll get Katrina over here. Hello. Good morning. How are you? <laughs> I'm good. How are you? I'm wonderful. You um. You let's talk about your tennis career a little bit. Oh well, I started in sixth grade not knowing how to hit a ball with a racket <laughs> at all. 
<laughs> you've come a long way. Yes, definitely for sure. I can actually hit it over the net. So well, that's, <laughs> that's good. good. That's that's part of the process there. Yeah. Um, what's been the the key to success for you to to be able to be successful? What's what's been the key for you? Uh, practice. Practice. <laughs> Lots of practice. Yeah. Um, focus. And you got to keep your confidence up and stay positive. I think. Is it difficult to continue with? with high um, expectations of yourself yes <laughs> but what's I mean, the what's the biggest challenge when you know when I get down on myself you know that you don't play well when you do that like mm. oh Katrina what are you yep, doing right. but <laughs> you just gotta be like okay next point next point do you play singles or doubles I play singles doubles is not no. a thing no <laughs> couldn't play with a partner I mean I did freshman year yeah. I think I did okay but I'm yeah. definitely stronger playing singles what's what's the 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 um, advantage to playing singles over doubles. You don't have to talk to anyone. <laughs> it's just you. <laughs> and I'm not very good. I'm not strong with my volleys. Mm -hmm. I'm better at ground strokes. Yeah. And, and you're better at ground strokes and you struggle with volleys. Yes. Yes. <laughs> so how do you get better with volleys? Practice. Practice. <laughs> that is my answer to everything. Yeah, practice is your answer to yes. everything. Well, that's, that, that makes a lot of sense. So what's your outlook for sectionals? Uh, I th like Megan said, I think we have a strong chance. I think our hardest opponent will probably be Greensburg, mm -hmm. and we just gotta work hard and get ready, or come ready to play. Yeah, and plans after high school? Uh, I plan on going to IUS to mm -hmm. study graphic design. Sectional coming up. Uh, draw is Monday. Sectional is Wednesday, Wednesday. Thursday, and Wednesday, Thursday, Saturday. Yes. yes. When yep. Talk about the sectional. Well, I don't really um, focus on who we draw mm. or we just need to worry about ourselves. Yeah. That we have, uh, this is a very competitive sectional and um, could go to, um, it's, it's a, uh, a toss-up really. We have to be ready and we just have to practice. We have to worry about ourselves and uh, how we play and uh, um, all these matches have been close and right. all these teams that are that are in the section. We didn't play Greensburg in the regular season, but mm -hmm. we did all the other. Mm -hmm. I think there was four mm -hmm. others. So uh, they've been very competitive matches. So we, you know, I'm, whoever we draw, we got to be ready to play. We got to be ready to go. It's it's sectional is, is uh, as it always is. It's the one and done theory. If if you continue to win, you continue to play. But you have to bring your your best game every time on the court. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, you can't can't worry about it. Right, and and for you guys just to go out and take care of business. I mean, you've been there before. You've been sectional champs before. These these young ladies know how to get the job done. Yes, that's that's right. That's right. And um, <clears throat> got two of them here with us, and we, we I have a lot of confidence that that if each of them plays to their potential, you know, we we have a shot. Mm -hmm. So. We just have to we have to execute. Got to go out and play. Yes. You had four matches this week. Did I hear you say that? Yes, four out of five days. Four out of five four days. Matches. How does that how does that wear on a team? Well, I definitely think they are tired. They were tired last night. So our win last night against Henryville was very good. I think because mm -hmm. we had two of our players that are normally in our lineup that weren't able to be there. Um, so their legs are tired, they're feeling it. We're gonna practice a little bit today, but they'll have the rest of the day off, Sunday to rest, to be ready to go for Monday's practice. Hey, coaches, we appreciate coming in this morning talking about Shaw Girls Tennis. Thank, Thank you, you for, having, for us. having us. No problem, of course. Uh, Shaw Girls Tennis, Chris and Natalie Hill, Katrina Gobert, Megan Hesse in with us this morning. We appreciate them coming in. That'll do it for this edition of Coach's Corner, live from McDonald's on Madison's Hilltop. I'm Tim Torrance, thanks to Rob Conant in studio. We'll see you next week for Coach's Corner here on Works 96.7.